So we're going to start with this wall here and we want to define this wall. To define the wall you want to use the define area tools which is this icon here. So now I'm going to zoom in by pressing F10 on the keyboard. I'm going to start up in this area. What I'm going to do is I'm going to define the whole area as one piece because it's easier and then cut out the windows or subtract them. So first of all I'm going to define these areas by zooming in. I just click down a point and I'm going to draw around the house. Now again you can keep zooming in by pressing F10 on the keyboard and get as detailed as you want. I'm going to use this line here as the cutoff point to switch directions of the uh, wall stones. Now on these plants you have a choice. You can go around these plants or you can go over these plants and replace them with new plants. But the problem is these plants are in the shade so they're really dark and most of the plants that we have in our database look more like these over here. Well, can you even see that? No, oh, you can't see them. Uh, scroll these over here that are green so it's going to look weird if I replace the plants so I'm going to have to go around the plants so again I'll zoom in a little bit more and luckily they're trimmed up pretty good so it's pretty easy to go around them so I'm going to pause now and come back when I have this defined Okay, so now I have this wall defined. What I need to do is cut out the windows. So to do that, you click on this icon here, which is the subtraction icon, which is going to take things out. And now let's zoom in here by pressing F10 again. And I'll show you how that works. I'll select on the polygon tool. So I want to go around this window. And you know what? Let's leave the ledge in here because I think it will look better. So when I click on this point here, you can see how that became lighter, which means nothing will be covering the window, so I'm cutting it out. Let's slide up here and cut out, say, this little piece here just to give you an idea. See how it became lighter? So now I'm going to have to do that to the window and the balcony part, which means basically I have to draw over the black area to keep it from being covered up. Okay, as you can see here, I've got this all cut out. It looks like a mess, and we'll see if it is a mess or not once I put a texture on the wall. So let's zoom back out here, and that's what we have. So I'm going to click OK to exit the Define Area menu, and then I'm going to save the file because I always save it after I've completed something like this, just in case the program crashes, your computer crashes, you get distracted, you accidentally close the file or whatever always save after you do a step. So now we're going to define this wall here. So basically I just do the exact same thing. I'm going to zoom in, get the define area tool, and the reason this wall is a separate area as opposed to this wall here is because the stones are going to be going in a different direction. You can't set stones to go in two different directions on the same defined area. Okay, so now we got this wall defined here. I'm going to click on Hardscape Library. I'm going to go from File and I'm going to apply a texture onto this wall so we can test the perspective out and see how things look. I don't know if this is the color we want, but it doesn't really matter because we can change that at any time. So what you want to do is once you've got a texture on there, first let's scale it down so it's in the ballpark, is you want to line up the perspective handles. Let's move this. Line up these perspective handles with the direction of the wall. For example, you got this top one here. You click on walls here for perspective so it grabs the, uh, the left and right and joins them together. So I'm going to move this one down and notice how the stones are changing in direction. I'll take this bottom one here and move it up. Okay, so I fixed the balcony part. Now I'm going to show you how to create shadows. First of all, I'm going to take this wall and I'm going to see where this shadow goes and where it's coming from. So I'm going to go up here to Area and I'm going to go to Revert Background, which basically takes the texture off. And pretty much that shadow is part of that. So we'll select on it again. I'll go Pattern Library. Now I want to grab this same pattern. I go here to Grab Pattern, click on that, and it puts it back on.
So now to create a shadow, what you do is select the area you want to create a shadow for. And I'm going to duplicate this whole area because I'm going to use that as a shadow. Instead of having to go back and draw it all again, which you could do that way, but it just takes more time. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll go up here to duplicate. And then I'll click down once. And then I'll right click to cancel. And now I want to make this piece a shadow. So all I have to do is go up here to shadow and click on it and now this becomes a shadow object. So I'm going to pick this up and move it down here into place. Now obviously the shadow is not dark enough. So I right click to bring up the properties. I'll go here to transparency. It's set at 25 meaning that it's only 25 percent opaque so it's really not very uh, dark. So I'm going to raise that to 55 and I click OK and 55 doesn't really look dark enough so I'm going to raise it to 66. Yeah, it looks pretty good. So now I got to move this around because you could see it's the exact same size so it needs to be exactly the same place. And if it's not, I'll just grab these corner handles and make it a little bit larger. Just a little bit. And move it down by using the arrow keys. And now I've got the shadow in that area. So now I want to do the same thing to this wall. So again I grab it, duplicate it, click down, right click, click shadow, and this one would be a little bit harder to line up because it's more complex. And that still looks a little light so I'm going to raise this to about say 33. If you're wondering why I use 33, 55, and 66, it's only because I don't have to look at the keyboard. I could just hit threes, you know, tell the cows to come home instead of trying to go 36, 37, or whatever. So that's why I do it that way. Yeah, looks pretty good. Okay, so now I'm going to define this area here of the house that you wanted stone on. And, uh,. I'm not going to force you to watch that part because it's really just you doing the same thing and I'll come back once I have that defined. So now you can see I have this wall area defined. I'm going to zoom out here. And I would have to define the side of the wall right here as a separate piece because again the stones will be going in a different direction and the shadow would be different. You can see that shadow is much darker. So I'm going to leave this defined area by click OK. And now I'm going to go in and draw this area inside here. Okay, so now I've got these two areas defined and you can't probably see this one as well, but this area is defined and it's going in a different direction. So again, I want to make a shadow of it. So again, you go up to duplicate, click, right click, click shadow, and then bring it into place. Right click to bring up properties. We'll make this 77. Uh, a little too dark. Let's go back to 66. Okay, looks good. So now we're going to do this one, and I think I did that one at 33 to match this wall over here. So again, we duplicate, click, right click. Whoops, don't want to cover it to an object yet. Click shadow, bring it into place. Use the arrow keys. Sometimes it's just easier than a mouse. And then right click, and that was 33, I think. And we'll zoom back out. Needs to be a little bit wider, so I'm just going to cheat here. Okay, so now we got those two walls. The last one to do is this one. And pretty much it's the exact same thing over and over again. Um, I think we're going to do this side wall here. Um, I'm not going to worry about this tree because I'm just going to replace it. looks like an Acer Paul made them. Oh, you can't even see what I'm doing. <laughs> This tree here, I'm just going to replace that with a real tree. One other thing I did that I didn't show you is a little trick here. Instead of going in, let's zoom in there, and drawing in between each one of these rails, which would be a real nightmare, what I did is I just defined over the whole area, put the stone on it as a separate area, and then I reduced the transparency of it to 75% so you could see through it. So you could see stone, yet you could see the rails of the uh, um, the railing coming down here anyway. So um, 
that's how I did that. So it looks pretty good, in my opinion. Okay, we're going to do the other well. We'll pause and we'll be back when this one's defined. Okay, to recap, I defined this area, then I went into the subtraction tool, then I drew around the windows and the little vents down here. So this area is ready to be put uh, some stone on it. So I bring up the perspective menu, hit grab pattern, click on that, and the stone is popped on. Um, let's put the perspective on that. I accidentally canceled that. So again, because <laughs> I forgot where I have the um, recording going here. So I click on walls and then I want to take this perspective handle and just move it down so that it matches with the top of the wall here. Let's go down here to the bottom. A little hard to tell where this wall really goes. Yeah, it looks about right. Okay, I'm happy with that. Let's zoom out. Looks good. Again, we need a shadow. I'm not going to bore you with that because I think you know how to do shadows by now. Um, I want to point one thing out here on this wall here. You notice that there is some light here. So somehow the shadows are cut open here for this section. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the shadow first by tracing that area. So we'll bring up the Define Area tools here. And we'll just do a quick trace. So the reason I did that is because I would have to put the texture on, take it back off to see where the shadow is. You can't just duplicate it like I did with the other ones. So I'll click OK, and then I would just click on Create a Shadow. So here's the shadow. I'm just going to set it off to the side, and now I'm going to go in and define that wall. Then I'll move the shadow back over it. Okay, now our next step is to define the driveway area. One thing you want to take into consideration is you have a curved driveway going around in a different direction and you have a walkway that starts about here. Usually you'll do the walkway in a separate piece because the pavers may be going straight where these may be curving or going in a different direction. So you could define them all as one, but I suggest I, I'm going to do them as two. Also notice there's a shadow going over the walkway. You'll want to uh, replicate that, but we'll to show you how to do that when we get back. And also notice there's a shadow over here. So actually, I'm going to define the shadows first. Um, let's do that. So basically what you do is bring up your drawing tools, just outline these. Now you can go over the actual shadow itself because if shadow goes into shadow, you really can't tell. So all I do is define that as an area, go up here to, well, you can't see where I'm going. Um, I'm clicking on Create Shadow. had to move the screen. So basically I got the shadow I just drew selected. I click on shadow and it's placed a shadow right there. I'll just pick it up so you can move it. I'm going to make it darker right now so I can find it easier. Let's make this about 55. And we'll put a one pixel blend on it. So here's my shadow. I'm just going to leave it up here in the air right now. And then I want to create a shadow over here. So I click OK to exit the menu, click on Shadow, and now the shadow is there. So you can barely see it. Let's make it darker. One pixel blend, and then I'll move it back into place. OK, now I'm going to define the driveway area. I'm not going to make you watch that because it's boring. Okay, I defined this area. I did it in two parts. Uh, you can see because these plants are overlapping the driveway here, so I just did it up to the plant here, then picked it up over here. Um, so it's all one consistent area. Now your job is to set in the perspective and scale. Now I don't know what angle you want these to go at, but I'm going to assume we've got to go off either this line here in front of the house or the driveway here. But I'm going to show you how to do it on the driveway and then I can always change it. So one thing you want to do is you want to go up here to free and select the handles on free because you're going to want to move these handles individually to set the perspective. Now again, I recommend that you watch the perspective movie because it will go into more detail than I am here. So I'm just going to take this line here and I'm going to line it up with the edge of the driveway and you see how those pavers are lining up with the edge because they always line up with the perspective handles. And this one isn't going in perspective. So now we got the pavers lining up here and going off into the distance. You can have them go off at an angle like this if you want. 
which actually that looks pretty good to me. And then you set the scale by taking the slider here and moving it to the left makes it smaller, moving it to the right makes it larger. Okay, so that's good enough for now. I'm going to do the walkway. So now I place the pavers on the walkway here and then I put the shadow on top. Let me explain that a little bit here. The walkway was over the shadow because I drew the shadow first. Everything in the program is an object on a layer. If I click on, gee, you can't see my menu either. Uh, pull this down. If I click on by name, you will see all the different uh, objects. Some are named, some are not. All these that say shadow are shadows. The one here that has the asterisk on it is the walkway. So I'm going to actually select on the shadow. And you can see that the shadow is selected. If I pick the shadow on this list and move it down below the walkway, you can see now it's underneath the walkway because the name here is underneath unnamed, which is the walkway. So if I click on this and bring it back up, um, the shadow is on the top. So everything is on a layer. Now, I sometimes go back and name things if it's a complicated image, but I'm not going to do that right now. But what we do need to do is we do need to group all the uh, the walls of the house. So if I change one wall, all the walls change. So let's just do that. So what you do, I'm going to turn off that shadow. That one's the walkway. Everything called unnamed is part of the house. Oh, you can't see that either. Well, there's a piece that's highlighted here. So that one's unnamed. You can see that this just highlighted here, the front of the house. I'm not sure which that one is. And I'm selecting all the pieces of the house. This should be the last one. So now they're all selected. You can see they have stars next to them. I click OK. And then I'm going to go here to Area and click on Create a Texture Group. Or you could use the keyboard shortcut Control G. Now they're all one group, so if I change it, drag and drop something on the wall, it should change all of them. So let me pull something up from the library. I don't know if these libraries are active. guess they're not. <clears throat> okay, let's try it now. So I'm going to grab a texture here and drop it onto the wall. And you can see that the whole house changed. So that is the advantage of creating them all as one group. You could just drag and drop them all at one time. Now, of course, I've lost the one that I used, but you know, while we're doing this, let's see if we can find one that looks closer to what you're asking for. That one may not be it, but that one actually I think looks pretty good too. Um, I'm going to save that library. So now you should save the uh, uh, file because I've added the driveway, I've added the walkway, the shadows, and I've grouped the walls together so I'm just going to click on save to update the file in case I lose it. 